Hello, this is Dr. Kraus with the second part of the quiz solution for Bode system identification uh, that I gave to my students. Um, I think this might be beneficial to other uh, subscribers who are studying dynamic systems and controls and have to do system ID. Uh, but I also just doing it for my students because we didn't have a chance to do this in lecture. So let's get started. This was the Bode plot that they were given, and the problem is how do we identify the transfer function associated with it? The low frequency slope of this Bode plot is plus 40 dB per decade, and the low frequency phase is plus 180 degrees, so there is a pure double differentiator at the origin. Uh, next, we see a slope change, uh, but it's tricky to talk about slopes when we get too close to an underdamp second order peak. So instead, I'd like to point out that there's a minus 180 degree phase change, and that is centered around uh, 0.02-ish hertz. Um, so either we have a highly damped second order pole, uh, zeta greater than 0.7, uh, but it's also equally possible that we would have two first order poles on either side of that. So either we've got an F of 0 0.2, an omega of 2 pi F, zeta 0.1. So we could then plug that into a standard form for a second order underdamped system. Let's call that zeta 1, F1, omega 1. And so we'd have omega 1 squared over S squared plus 2 zeta omega 1, omega 1, S plus omega 1 squared. Or... Uh, as I was starting to say earlier, I could decide there's a first order pole kind of on either side of that. And so just pick some frequencies that are just above and below F1. Uh, don't forget that those poles would need to be in radians. So we'll come back in a second and multiply that by 2 pi. Um, and then we would have a form similar to this one, although we could also have P1 times P2 in the numerator. But either of those forms is equally valid for that overdamped looking or heavily damped looking section. Next, um, it's fairly apparent that there is a peak around 0 0.25 hertz. Pay no attention to what this guy's writing on the page. And we would have a fairly standard Second order, it's clearly underdamped. Uh, zeta is relatively small, so I'm going to ballpark that at 0 0.2. And then we would put that in our standard form for a second order underdamped pole. Omega 2 squared over S squared plus 2 zeta omega 2 S plus omega 2 squared. Last thing that I see on this Bode plot is a phase increase of roughly 90 degrees. So I'm going to find roughly where the center of that phase change is. Uh, the slope change may not be obvious in the magnitude, but the center of the phase change appears to be at around 3 hertz. So we have a first order 0 at 3 times 2 pi, and I would put that in the form S plus Z over Z. At this point, we're ready to assemble our final transfer function. There are four different terms. The double differentiator, the first order 0, and the two underdamped second order poles, or the option to replace that first one with two real poles. So one uh, completely valid answer to this thing would have the S squared uh, times S plus Z, and then I'm throwing in some other kind of gain type factors so that if I were to do system identification, omega one and omega two wouldn't cause this thing to slide up and down as I'm trying to optimize them. And so my final form would have two underdamped poles in the denominator, like so. And the key thing is to remember that there's also some unknown gain, uh, which is kind of hard to determine by hand if I've got a pure double differentiator. So I would find that with a computer. Um, as I mentioned, there's also a second form, also completely valid, uh, where the only difference is in the denominator, we're going to replace the Sec the first underdamp second order system with two first order poles. And unless you were to go in and try to optimize this thing and curve fit it, you really can't tell which of these two is the more correct answer, in my opinion. So the second form also equally valid. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Thanks.